just leaving Jamaica. It's 4.30 in the morning. I'm going out and there's uh, giant tankers like this. Pretty dark out here, major harbor. Super intimidating coming in and out of here in the dark. There's these little lights, I don't know if they're fishermen. I think they're fishermen. Sure hope they stay out of our way because we can't see them. So this guy here uh, just blared his horn at me to make sure I knew he was there. <laughs> we're we're uh, cutting it close. It's about as close as I'd like to ever get. Flensburg. Don't end up like this guy. It's like an old wrecked monohull. Didn't quite clear the channel correctly. It's kind of fun doing this stuff, but it's kind of spooky too. Side of land. That's the left overview of Jamaica. And we are zipping. Got about 18 knots of wind, full main, full Genoa. And this is the big, dangerous, scary passage for us because last time we did this, we went Bonaire to Panama around the coast of Colombia and nearly lost our boat. I'll put a link to that fun video uh, up above. But then this time we decided to go all the way back around uh, the, the north side of the Caribbean to try to avoid that coast of Columbia. So we're going from Jamaica down to Panama, and we're really hoping that this uh, passage is a good one. So we've got um, pretty good wind right now. Hopefully it just kind of keeps like this, doesn't go any stronger. And we'll be there in three days. So let's see how it goes. Right now we're tracking along at eight. Eight knots, and that will take us two days and 18, 17 hours to get there. We got Reese the Peace just chilling out. How you doing, Reese? He's doing good. Looks like Pierce is taking a nap. He got up the earliest with me. And then we have Hale over here. Hey, you. And you. What's going on? Now, what did we tell you about this passage? What could it be? Uh, rough. Could be a rough one, right? How's it so far? Okay. Good. Would you like to listen to an audio story? Sure. A new one? Sure. You got it. Oh, yeah. What are those new party boys gifting? Okay. I got my new GoPro selfie stick. What? It's the? super long. We're going to get some dolphins. I have zip tied a GoPro mount to my, to my, uh, what is this called? My hook, my staff. Anyway, so now it clips on right here. And then we can watch the dolphins. Let's see if it works.
All right, so this is interview time. What did your captain just do? Uh, really, really, really something I would say potentially... Um, Catastrophic might be a good word. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think one might go as far as to say... Okay, I, let's... We won't point fingers, but it was sad <laughs> to mess around with Otto Helm when we are two days from shore in any direction. And, um, Let's be honest. The auto helm, the auto helm is never really quite worked never, right. It hasn't, and that's it, just an additional Thank you reason. Thank you, yep. It's a reason if it's at, it, it, not to mess with it when we're so far from shore. Yeah, but this is when you're bored and you've got time to do stuff like that. I know. Let's do it when we're like two hours from shore. Okay. <laughs> and you can mess yeah. around. Yeah, so I adjusted the autopilot and went back to uh, hit auto, and it said installation not complete, which I would think the man, I think I would think in. The adjustments of the settings, and if you made an adjustment setting while underway, or just in general, if you ever made an adjustment setting that's going to wipe out your installation, then it would probably warn you that that's about to happen. But no, nope, Bruno doesn't warn you. So I changed this from a semi-displacement to a sailboat, and I think that wiped out all the settings. And I went to hit auto, and it didn't work. And we are two days offshore. That was worrying. But we're good now. Captain fixed it temporarily. Now we need to do settings adjustments again when we get there. Awesome. All right, we made it to Panama. Basically here. <laughs> this is where I've been sleeping. Pierce has been keeping me company. I'm really tired. We're getting close. Guys, hang on a second. Let me call this boat and see what he's doing. CFS Pack Tau. CFS Pack Two. CFS Pack Two. This is sailing vessel Archer. Archer on one six. Okay, I'm Captain, you want to go to zero six? Tell me if I should adjust uh, This is the sailing vessel Archer straight off your beam. I uh, just noticed that our CPA is rather close and just wanted to call and see uh, what we should do about it. Over. He's just drifting, but he's drifting right toward us. At four and a half knots. This guy? This guy right here. Uh, he doesn't know about us. No, 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 no. That's as scared as we were for this passage, it could not have turned out better. We were so happy we avoided the ABC Island to Panama Passage, and we would urge all other boaters to consider the same. Over the last month, we've put 1,500 nautical miles under our hulls, and we've gone massively out of our way to avoid the gale force winds off the Colombian coast, and we've actually enjoyed it. But most importantly, that strategy paid off. This is one of our most pleasant voyages yet, on average, we sailed over 200 nautical miles a day and it was even comfortable, not scary at all. We sailed under Spinnaker into the breakwater off Cologne and prepared to dock at the Shelter Bay Marina. We'll stage here for the next two to three weeks while we wait for our canal transit date. <laughs>